we will be covering assignment 3.3 finally and uh, hopefully we will finish 3.3 uh, next week uh, Carl will uh, give you a quick review or also answer questions and maybe start reviewing the final exam um, so just to go quickly over what uh, we've covered in 3.2 so we presented you with a page table we said that page table maps VPN to PTEs and each process has its own page table um, we refer to a single entry that store information about a virtual page as a, a page table entry and what you need in a PTE is basically a VPN and its corresponding PPN permission and state and other information so we discussed the design that you can uh, use to design your data structure for your page table uh, we've recommended using link list um, uh, which uh, save on space but it's expensive on uh, each translation but still um, it will get you past 3.2 and 3.3 tests uh, we also talked about multi-level page table as an option for you if you want to go this, this path and we recommended that uh, in order for you to uh, continue passing tests up until 3.3 uh, we do recommend that you use a four level page table um, we covered the address uh, user address space which is a set of uh, uh, virtual addresses that the kernel make available to the user process information that you need to keep in your address space or region information uh, stack heap information and then the uh, reference to your page table we've covered the interfaces and you have an example in load elf.c we also covered the TLB um, that is used by the MMU to speed up the translation uh, from the virtual to physical uh, addresses and we've said that every core has 64 entries for the TLB and each TLB entry is of 64 bit divided into two 32 bits uh, one for the virtual and address and the one for uh, the other for the physical uh, address there are some bits that you can use uh, some flags like uh, TLB dirty and valid that are more useful now uh, since you are in 3.3 we're going to discuss those um, then we've mentioned the VM fault uh, flow so whenever a VM fault happened that means a TLB fault did happen already so what you need to do is you need to check the fault address to see if that address is valid falls within the defined region if that's valid then you need to check if you have an entry for that address in the page table if not you create one uh, virtually and physically if you have an entry then you check if the virtual page is, uh, uh, is in memory and not on disk if it's in memory then you need to update the uh, TLB so today we're going to cover the physical page states, uh, virtual page states, swapping, swap out, swap in, and address space with the swapping. Then uh, the last slides are car slides that I do recommend you going through them. Uh, we'll talk about them. So we are at the third checkpoint. The next checkpoint now will be, which is the last one, uh, Friday, May 5th. So uh, you should already been started um, so for physical page states uh, now uh, this is what I'm gonna present to you is the complete picture but what you only need now let's start with what you need with OS 161 which is the free state the fixed uh, state and used so combine the dirty and clean into used so the free state that means the physical page is not used it's free for the user to use the fixed uh, physical page that means this page is used by the kernel and it should not be swapped out it should remain in the memory and then you have on the other side with uh, so if this side is with kernel pages or whatever pages that you should not swap out the other side is with the user pages where you can with OS 161 what you really need is only used just like mark the physical page as used and um, that's 
what is required you to do, but you can also uh, implement an additional feature, which is dirty and the clean, which would tell you just like if, um, so as we said, the free is a free page, fixed is a kernel page, or a page that you shouldn't, shouldn't swap out. The dirty page, that means that page is allocated, but the content of that page is not similar to what you have on disk, or you just allocated that page that has no uh, actual uh, copy on disk. So, and with the clean, that means the content of that physical page is the same as the content on the swap disk. So there is uh, nothing to worry about. So as you can see the states here with the kernel pages, you're gonna use the, uh, things gonna go through the functions of free K pages and alloc K pages. With the user pages, however, things go with your uh, function that you've implemented, the page alloc and page free. These are the user functions. So whenever a page is dirty, uh, you need to flush uh, what's for the difference or things now has been modified that is in memory, then you need to make a copy on disk if you want to maintain that state. And then you can change the state of that physical page to clean. And um, we're going to discuss more just like how you're going to uh, implement this. For example, you're going to use the dirty bit, which has some other usage other than just like telling if that page is read only or read write. So for the physical page states, these are the complete picture. I just like uh, repeat that what you all really need is the free fixed and uh, the uh, used, which combines the dirty and the clean together. Um, so these are the states for the physical page states. With the virtual page states, you have three states, unmapped, mapped, swapped, and that's depending on your implementation. So unmapped means that uh, that virtual page is not being allocated uh, virtually and physically. Map, that means the virtual page has been allocated physically, but, and that page is in memory. While swap means that that virtual page has been allocated and that page is in swap disk, it's not in memory. So these are the states and things could change based on your implementation, but this is the general idea that you should um, uh, have uh, about uh, the physical and virtual page states. Any questions on these? Okay, so revisiting the TLB entry. Now let's discuss more um, additional rules that you can use the dirty bit with, uh, but that's again not required. I'm just giving you uh, the idea of uh, what are the stuff that you can use the dirty bit with. So we've already told you that the dirty bit tells if that page permission is read only or uh, read write. You can also use that dirty bit when you just like, if you want to implement copy on write and for example, set that bit into zero, uh, which means read only because with copy on write, you basically, if you want to, let's say with AS copy, instead of copying all pages, you only refer to the uh, original pages and then whenever a modification happens or write will happen on these pages, you then duplicate these pages. So you can set that dirty bit to zero. That means it's only read only. Whenever a VM fault happens on this page, then you need to create a duplicate page and then change the permission, make it a read write, which mean the dirty bit should be uh, switched to one and then you can continue uh, the writing or you can use it to protect clean pages. So we've said that you have clean or dirty pages, so that means if you want to implement that functionality, you can use the dirty bit for that to protect the clean pages, and uh, you can set it to zero as long as um, the page is not being written to. That means whatever in memory is the same as whatever on disk. And whenever a write or VM fault happens on that, you flip that, change the state or the permission, and then permission and the state, uh, sorry, not the permission, the TLB uh, dirty flag, you change that and the state of that uh, page, and you continue writing. 
So these are some other usage that you can use the dirty bit with, but uh, again, not required. So with the swapping, um, you have already covered swapping and what is swapping, why would, do we need it? So it just like gives the user process the, the illusion that you have as much memory as the disk and as fast as the RAM. And uh, we have two main interfaces, swap out, swap in. Swap out if you run out of physical pages, then you need to swap out some pages. Um, and then swap in whenever a VM fault happens on a page that has been swapped out uh, of memory, then you need to bring that page back from swap disk into memory and then continue. So with the swap out, what are the uh, steps for you uh, you need to take with the swap out? The first thing you need to do is you need a synchronization. Uh, why? Because, for example, if you have, let's say you need to swap out a page that, is be, uh, that belongs to another process that's currently running on another core, that means you cannot manipulate that page up until you acquire the log for that page. Why you, de you need that? Because now, if you want to, um, well, um, you need these, that lock on that page so that you make sure uh, no access happens to that page uh, from uh, the process that it belongs to. So you acquire the synchronization primitive of that on that uh, page and then you need to remove the translation from the TLB for that core that the process is currently running and as we mentioned in the last recitation that is, this only required if the process that the page belongs to is currently running. And um, you copy the content of the memory uh, of that page from memory to disk, and then update the, uh, the page table entry to indicate that this page is not currently in memory and it is in uh, swap disk. So there are some uh, questions that uh, you might wonder with the swap out is where to store the page, how to notify the owner, and where do I find the page later on when I want to swap in the page? So the swap storage, basically, what you need to use, things are uh, mentioned to you in sys161.conf uh, configuration file. Uh, you have two disks that you only need one, but you need to enable both. The comments tells you exactly what you need to do. So you should use the VFS open to open that swap disk, and you should uh, pass the file name that is mentioned here uh, as the file name and then the read write as the permission. Now, how should we notify uh, the owner? Notifying the owner basically now, every physical page, as we said, if you remember that it should keep, at some point we said that with the three, uh, assignment 3.3, you need to keep track of the owner information in the physical page. So, um, this is how you notify the owner. You retrieve the owner, and then in the page table of that owner, you need to set the state of that virtual page that it is not in memory and it will be on disk. So you need to change the uh, uh, you need to change where is the page in the page table for that process. And now, how should uh, we found uh, the page? So you have the swap disk, and what you need to know is that the swap disk is shared between all processes. What you should do is you need to divide the swap disk into blocks, uh, the same as page size, it's gonna be 4K. And you should implement a data structure that keep tracks of the blocks on disk, uh, on the swap disk. So your data structure will basically should be able to allocate a block on disk whenever you need, especially with a swap out. It should be able also to retrieve uh, some blocks on disk whenever you want to swap in. And for that, you can check the uh, bitmap.h header. It has helper functions that you can use to uh, implement your uh, swap disk data structure. So that's all about uh, swap out.
But today we don't have a lot of material to cover, so we're going to finish early. So I'm going to allow questions after we finish. Um, so what's left for us um, is swap in. So swap in happens whenever VM fault is triggered, and that when the VM fault uh, determines that uh, the problem is a page fault, which means the page is not in memory and it's in swap disk, then you should go ahead and swap in your page. So um, how should this happen? You should find the swap block that um, belongs to that, to that page in the swap disk, and then you need to allocate the physical, a page in the physical memory, and that could also trigger a swap out uh, at the same time if you don't have any free uh, blocks on, in the physical memory. Then you need to copy the content from disk to memory and update the uh, page table that for that process that this page is now in memory. So that's all about swap out and swap in. Um, few things that you need to uh, uh, take note of is what are the changes that comes with uh, swapping uh, to the address space uh, interfaces. So with AS copy and AS destroy, you need, if you remember that we told you that with AS copy, you need to copy each and every page. We need to complete that sentence with whether the page is in memory or on swap disk. Now, how should you do this? This is up to you. Uh, you can just like decide how things should go because there are several scenarios for that. Whether you, for example, if the page is in a swap disk, are you gonna bring that page into physical memory and then copy it or just like copying right away from the swap disk? So how you do this depends on your uh, implementation. The same thing goes with, the, uh, with AS destroy. AS destroy, you need to free each and every page. And that means in memory and swap disk. So these are the changes that you need to keep in mind for your address space interfaces. And then you have these three slides that uh, Carl created. It's really good, good slides. It will tell you how you should go about uh, implementing 3.3. It will also tell you how you can get some uh, partial credit if you couldn't complete the 3.3. So the idea is just like start expanding and writing your data structure, write the swap disk data structure routines, and then um, you can start with a single process. And if you get that running, you could be able to get about around uh, 40 points and then start expanding that into multi-process using one CPU and then multiple process using multiple CPUs. And then once you're done with that and get your points, you can add some optimization, like if you want copy and write, uh, dirty, clean states, uh, or just like uh, how you would choose your uh, page, which page should be uh, swapped out. This stuff that you can add once you're done uh, with your 3.3. So that's all I have for today. Um, any questions? So this covers basically your 3.3. And uh, next week, we might do a review on, again, 3.3. And we might, uh, Carl might start reviewing the final exam. So thanks for coming. We will be here uh, until the end of the lecture. So if you have any questions, thanks.